today we're going to look at the covalent bonding present in methane. And we're going to explain that covalent bonding using the hybridization theory and the molecular orbital theory. Let us begin our lesson. In the first line, we have the electronic configuration of carbon in the ground state. Ground state meaning that all of these electrons are found in the orbitals of lowest possible energy. When carbon becomes excited by absorbing some form of energy, and if you want to link this to the topic energetics, that would be the activation energy barrier that will surpass, then one of the electrons in the 2s, now it becomes promoted to the vacant 2p orbital. I'm just writing that it's 2pz. We now have carbon with four unpaired electrons, so we now tetravalent. So we have four unpaired electrons, but they're in two different types of orbitals. They're in the s orbital and the p orbital. I've drawn a diagram over there now indicating the s orbital and the p orbital. So what happens now, it is energetically unstable for the atom to have the s orbitals and the p orbitals separate in second energy level. So what it does is just merge all of those two different um, types of orbitals and it creates new atomic orbitals called sp hybridized atomic orbitals. Because there are three p orbitals merging with a one s orbital, the hybridized atomic orbitals that would be formed in methane would be sp3 hybridized atomic orbitals. So let me go ahead and write the electrons now how they how they'll be present in these sp3 hybridized atomic orbitals. So we have. 2sp3, 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 and we have one unpaired electron in each of these atomic orbitals. We had one, two, three, four atomic orbitals. So when these atomic orbitals merge to create the hybrid orbitals, we have one, two, three, four of them. Whoops, I left out the S. Is going to be 2 sp3. When carbon is like this, it's still excited, and guess what? It's not ready for bonding. So in methane, we have 1, 2, 3, 4 covalent bonds. So we need 4 hydrogen atoms. The electronic configuration for hydrogen, of course, is 1s. So let me show the bonding that will take place now in methane. So we have the 1s orbital for four different hydrogen atoms. And of course, one electron is found in each. If the 1s orbital in one hydrogen atom overlaps with one of the sp3, then this forms a molecular bond where these electrons now will be present and it's going to be a sigma bond because it's a single bond. So let us call this bond number one. We have overlap taking place again right here. This is now bond number two. Another overlap of atomic orbitals creating bonding orbitals. This is bond number three and this is bond number four. So we now have four single bonds and these electrons now that are paired up in the methane molecule they're in the sigma bonding orbital. I'm going to walk over there now and indicate what's happening. So to form these sigma bonds, we have sp3 and s atomic orbitals overlapping to form the sigma bonding orbital. And there's a rule of atomic orbitals to say that for every atomic orbital that overlaps, you create the same amount of um, bonding orbitals. No, not necessarily bonding orbitals, but molecular orbitals. Half of them will be bonding orbitals where the electrons are found, and the other half now will be antibonding orbitals. So I'll be talking about methane. How is it that this molecule is shaped? To explain the shape of the methane molecule, you will have to look at another theory now called valence shell electron pure repulsion theory. So let me just grab a few models constructed earlier for you and show you how these bonds are arranged. This one is in the form of a tetrahedron. This is the methane one, and the atom, the carbon atom, would be in the center there, and the hydrogen would be at the end. 
So you can see that these buns are arranged in the shape of a tetrahedron. Here's another model. Well, of course, the black ball is carbon and the white balls now are hydrogen. So the angle between these bonds would be the tetrahedron bond angle of 109.5 degrees. Oh, yes, I forgot about that. 109.5 degrees. So this would be the tetrahedron shape now that methane is configured in. Why is that so? Because these electrons, they're negative and they tend to repel each other. So they want to be the maximum distance away from each other. And as such, methane now takes the configuration of a tetrahedron. So that is it in terms of the bonding using the hybridization theory where the two atomic orbitals were merged to create new bottom atomic orbitals. And when these atomic orbitals overlap with the hydrogen atomic orbitals, we created bonding orbitals to form this molecule. So that is molecular orbital theory there. So that is it for now. You've been learning science. This is C. Williams Massey. See you in the next video. Bye.